Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, I am Laramie. Last episode our adventurers gracefully escaped the forest and decided to head towards Thunderlin. As you may guess from the title, today I will be painting some gnomes. Stay with me to find out why, because this is getting a little bit weird. The journey to Thunderlin went without trouble. Returning under granted us free lodging in the local inn and fortunately we also found the owner of Flöckchen the terrible obese bunny. Parting with a friendly advice that it loves snacking on flowers, especially daisies, the group decides to help the town by working on their posted commissions, one of which asks to go to the nearby settlement of rock gnomes in the east and request any kind of advanced technology that could help defend the town against the recent dragon attacks. The group heads to that settlement called Gnomengard the next morning. <clears throat> Probably pretty bright since they are cave gnomes, rock gnomes. And I don't think they get much sunlight, so not much color in their skin. <laughs> As the adventurers arrive at the supposed cliffside, they find themselves at the foot of a shimmering waterfall pouring right into a small lake, filled with tiny islands and lots of colorful mushrooms. Above the lake spans a suspension bridge from one cave entrance to another, and looking around further they noticed more entrances around the area, which all looked like they were drilled mechanically. Not knowing what to expect, they sent in the raccoon to scout the place and discover potential dangers. Since Flynn took too long to return with any news, the rest of the team got nervous and decided to go after him, only to learn that he got distracted by funny looking mechanical crap spiders that he would fit perfectly into. Let's continue with the few instances where they were wearing same colored uh, clothes that I will just turn into regular leather. Because for the most part they are pretty colorful, so gonna be a lot of different colors everywhere. But let's start with the one that is the same everywhere. United once again, they head deeper into the caves and come across a huge door. Hearing a lot of hustling from the other side, Laurel knocks on the door, hoping to find out what was going on. Greeted by a seemingly stressed but definitely friendly chef, the group quickly realizes that this must be the kitchen. Many gnomes are preparing what appears to be a feast in the background, consisting of all kinds of shimmering mushrooms from around the area as well as many little fancy baked goods. Odia steps forth to ask where we could find tinkerers capable of producing dragon repelling gadgets. Dragons you say? That sounds like a job for full step and double top. Definitely try to avoid factory though, as her stuff usually can't even reach the outdoors without falling apart in a spectacular firework. Just follow the path there, over the bridge, past Ulla and Pock, straight through the room of knives and you are basically standing in the workshop. Is that everything? Okay, bye! And before they could even grasp the concept of a room full of knives, the door was shut again. Since there was barely any leather to cover, surprisingly, on these creatures, uh, I will now continue with the colorful part of their attire, which will, according to our DM, <laughs> consist of a mixture of purple, red, red and camera really okay oh green so yeah let's get going following the directions the group heads towards the bridge Though on the way, they are greeted by a little gnome tinkering on a crap machine whose size was most certainly not considered when started construction inside the tunnels. AKA, it most certainly won't go anywhere, but this one specific room it is currently in. Ah, hi there, factory in the name. May I ask for your opinion? The group agreed, although confused. Excellent. Say, what do you think of my beautiful baby here? Built her all myself, and boy, can she probably pack a punch. Uh, probably, replies Laurel. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, I never tested it yet, but oh, you give me just the idea. Just hold still for a second. You guys make for a perfect target dummy. 
and before anyone could object, Factor A mounted the machine and was ready to rain down hell on anyone in the room. Alright, so next I want to go ahead and color in all their little shiny armor pieces and metal parts and I would assume since there are gnomes that there's a lot of metal in there, so yeah. Um, I decided to go for a kind of golden look, tainted gold, so it's gonna look quite golden in the end, like I tried it once on this one, this is basically what it would look like in the end. Looks quite good in my opinion, so let's apply it to all of them. Of course, there was no stopping her anymore, and the adventurers had no choice but to disable the machine somehow. While the big guys tried to bring the machine down by focusing on the legs, Flynn used his size and agility to get on top of the machine and take down the weaponry one by one. As predicted by the chef from earlier, the machine fell apart quicker than anyone expected, as it basically only managed to shoot at us once before crashing down into a complete mess of wood and steel. Alrighty, need some reinforcing right here and uh, here. Thanks so much guys, I have to go back to the drawing board. And while Flynn had the chance, as he stood on top of the spider together with Factory, he gave her a good clap on the back of her head for good measure. Okay, for this one, since I don't feel like every single gnome should be covered in plate armor, <laughs> I'm gonna put this one more in a leathery attire. But there's still a little bit of gold stuff like the pickaxe and the lantern. But yeah, everything else will probably turn into leather. Alright, uh, I will now go over to the hair colors. And yeah, I guess I will mix it up a little bit with. Once again, some of the. Uh, these colors again. For those that are missing one of the three colors, I will put that third color in there. And for everyone else, I will probably just use some good old black. <laughs> Heading towards the Room of Knives, the group meets Ola and Pog, two guards watching over the bridge. After a little back and forth about who the freak are you guys, what the hell was that noise back there, and you sure you are not some sort of shapeshifters? They eventually let us pass. When asked about the Room of Knives, they just shrugged, eh, just flick the switch off on the other side of the room. Simple. On the other side? Yeah, magic hand, bing bang boom, done. Hmm? After explaining that no one in the group is capable of such magic, one of the guards escorts them to the room to turn them off for them. Shortly after, we have finally reached the workshop of Fiddlestip and Devil Dope. This was a little bit too wet. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it upside down for a while. Alright, and for the most part of the base, except for those little crystals that will come later, I'm gonna go ahead with some good old Gravelord Grey again. Because, well, they are in a cave. I would say that is mostly grey, I think. I'll leave. <laughs> We can't head on technology just like that. You would have to get approval by the kings, but good luck with that right now. Yeah, ever since the disappearance of some of our people, Corbos went completely shut and lets no one even close to him. Additionally, we haven't even seen his husband, King Gnergli, in weeks. If you wanna try your luck, their chamber is at the very end of that hallway there, but don't get your hopes up. Obviously, we tried our luck and long story short, Unless we can get rid of the shapeshifter within their ranks, or prove that there is none, they won't make any deal whatsoever. Since the most recent person that went missing was last seen in the throne room, the group decides to investigate there, and to anyone's surprise, 
thanks to detect magic, they actually find a hidden button on the wall. But boy, do things go south from here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and color in any remaining details on each gnome for now. Because some of them, or fix some of the facial errors. Because some things are still not colored in, but yeah, soon they will. So it's just a little detailing. That could be literally any color. After a short hallway full of nothing but another door, the group finds themselves in the middle of the royal bedchamber, and right next to the bed was King Corbel's husband, King Nergli himself, tied up to a chair. Well, this is awkward, went through everyone's head. Of course, right away the other king enters the room from the other side as well. After some wasted efforts of explaining the situation, Sarad points out how he detects some magic coming from a box that King Corvus is slowly but steadily trying to sneak up to, as he tries to warn him of the potential danger of that box, thinking it could be the monster thereafter. He rushed the last few meters towards the box, but before he could reach it, Laurel kicked him across the room. <laughs> we are now officially in a combat scenario with the King of Nomengard. Ain't that great. Okay, apparently I don't have a base yellow, but I have a la layer yellow. <laughs> so, I guess it will cover good enough, let's hope. <laughs> With his anger now focused on Laurel, Flynn tries to check the box to potentially give reasons for his companion's actions, but alas, it was just full of magical gear. Noticing a wand, Flynn quickly grabs it and prepares for his next move. I don't know where I'm currently at with my voiceover in the background, but in case it isn't quite clear yet, or if I haven't reached that point yet, who knows, this is supposed to be the King Corbus. And his magical gear that he was trying to get out of the box, hoping that I was already at that point, unless spoiler alarm. <laughs> Uh, was uh, what's it called? It was basically fire magic gear, and well, you never got to use it, but it makes me believe that he was probably some kind of fire mage. So in tune with that, I want to make his crystals especially red compared to all the other yellows and that one blue one here. So yeah, to go with this theme basically. Luckily, after one good smack on the head, the king fell unconscious and further bloodshed was somewhat prevented. After explaining the situation more calmly to Gnergli, who was still tied to the chair by the way, he says, bloody hell guys. That could have been handled better, I understand, but you better take your leave for now. This room is most certainly safe, as we have been in here for weeks now and nothing happened in here. All the attacks happened somewhere else in this cave. Obviously, the group takes the advice and leaves the chamber to start looking elsewhere for those shapeshifters. Alright, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, there will be a part 2 to this Nomengard arc, because there was just too much happening to put it all in one episode. But yeah, uh, the gnomes I painted uh, are once again made by Artisan Guild. A link to them will be in the description below, as always. And well, yeah, if you have any suggestions what I could improve on or what you really liked, please leave it in the comments. If you like the video, of course, like it. If you really like the idea of the series, maybe even subscribe. I don't know. And well, anyway, see you next time. Adios.
it is so friggin dry in this room that my wet palette is drying up. <laughs> All right. Why? There we go. Beautifully red. No. I will go over with a wash and in this case, since I still believe that they are gonna be pale as F word, uh, I'm gonna go with the softest one that I believe I have, which is literally called the soft tone. Flynn used the size and agility to get on top of the machine and take down the weaponry one by one. Though based on the chef's earlier mentions, the machine uh, what? <laughs> what? Just as predicted by the chef earlier, the machine fell apart quicker than anyone expected as it